In this video, I'm going to share with you how a pharmacist can become a physician and ultimately live out their true passion and explore other opportunities that will lead to a more fulfilling life in healthcare. Hi, my name is Nathan Gartland, and this is the Physician Pharmacist YouTube channel. For those of you who don't know me, I'm a licensed pharmacist and a fourth year medical student. Because of my non-traditional background, I constantly get questions from the pharmacy community about how to make this initial transition, something that I'm super excited to share with you in today's video. As a bonus, I also served as a former member on the Medical School Admissions Committee. Now, the initial answer is that a pharmacist, of course, can get into medical school, but it might not be as easy as you initially expect. The basic questions that we will focus on today revolve around some of the the major concepts that will influence your total outcome at the end of this process. This includes having an understanding of your why you want to make this transition into medicine, and it needs to be part of your identity. Secondly, we're going to address when you should make this particular switch, understanding how the medical school application process works and the timeline that goes into it. And lastly, what are the actionable steps that you can take today to start this process and this journey. I'm going to break down each one of these questions to make sure you understand the invaluable information that goes into this particular process. Afterwards, we'll have a short video talking about some of the most common questions I get from pharmacy individuals who are making the transition into medicine. So starting out with our first principle, understanding why you want to make this initial transition into medicine. An alternative way to ask this is ask yourself, why not pharmacy? Has the profession lost its initial appeal? Are you tired of constantly battling with insurance companies over which medications should be covered? Or are you looking to expand your scope of practice to reach a patient population that you haven't previously had access to? Whatever your reason may be, you need to have a strong rationale as to why you're making this dramatic career switch. You need to convince a medical school committee why you are doing this in the first place. And I challenge you to ask yourself, will doing this make you happier in the end? Lastly, getting into medical school is going to take more than 50% of your effort. You need to make solid commitments to this process. There is no half in or half out principle here. I started this video with this foundational concept because it is the bedrock of your entire application as a whole. Once you have established your why, you are now ready to move on to the second stage of this process. Let's get into principle number two. The next logical step is understanding and gathering information of what's to come. And I think the best place to start with this is to get an appreciation for how the medical cycle is structured. Medical school admissions is rather unique in that it follows a very protracted timeline that can take over an entire year from start to finish. For instance, your application may open in May of June of that particular year, but you will not actually matriculate into medical school if you are, of course, accepted until the following August. This also means that you need to build up a very strong application prior to that one year deadline. I often have people tell me that they want to start medical school, but on further inspection, I look at their application and they have over two years worth of catch up work that needs to be completed before they can confidently apply. Understanding this second principle can allow for you to have the foresight to plan for your future and have have a better potential outcome down the road. This includes getting shadowing hours, publishing research projects, and finishing up any kind of prerequisites that you may require, along with so much more. Up next, we're going to talk about the actionable steps at which you can take today to start your medical school application process. Before we move on to that, if you're enjoying this video, please do me a huge favor and like the video below and go ahead and subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, please comment those below and I'll try to answer them the best I can and you'll have the possibility of having that content featured in the next video. And so now for our final principle, how to take actionable steps towards getting into medical school and successfully making this transition. And I like to break this down into two different components, part A and part B. Part A stems from understanding your competitiveness as an applicant. There are only a finite number of seats available and on average, only 40% of applicants will ever matriculate into medical school. Take a second and let that sink in and ask yourself, are you really that more interesting or that more competitive than the 60% that did not get into medical school? If your answer is no, that might mean that you have a lot of work ahead of you. However, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Being honest with yourself and your overall competitiveness as an applicant can allow for you to address some of those shortcomings ahead of time and avoid common mistakes that overconfidence ensures. Do you have a high GPA, well-rounded clinical experiences and non-clinical experiences, as well as good showmanship? Honestly, half the battle is showing yourself in the right kind of light. If you cover your bases and craft a narrative that fits your overarching experience, you'll find that the application process is far more forgiving than you might find on the internet or what other people have experienced. You can take action now by looking back at your transcript and understanding where you fall when it comes to your GPA. This also includes undergraduate courses too, so don't forget to include those in those final calculations. Generally speaking, you want your GPA to be greater than 3.7, although this is just a rough recommendation. Alternatively, 
If your GPA is less than 3.2, you may come across additional challenges, but don't fret, there is alternative ways to improve your application if you do have a low GPA. If you're still with me, we can then talk about part B, understanding the MCAT. The MCAT is a necessary entrance exam that is essential to getting into medical school. Scoring well on this particular exam can potentially outweigh even low or terrible GPAs. My top level recommendations with regard to the MCAT is to avoid beating yourself. As a fellow pharmacist, I was arguably overconfident with my particular skills when it came to preparing for this exam. The skills I learned to work as a clinical pharmacist had zero application when it came to the MCAT. Unfortunately, the MCAT is strongly based off of a lot of prerequisite courses, including general biology, general chemistry, organic chemistry, and even physics. Preparing for this exam can often take several months, so do not underestimate the work that is required to perform well. So now you're probably asking yourself, what actionable steps can you take right now with regards to the MCAT? I think you should consider taking a free practice exam that's available online to understand your baseline knowledge. Once you understand how they ask questions, you can begin to start planning how to prepare for this exam. At this point you should have a better idea of what's to come with regards to making the transition into medicine. Hopefully this video has inspired you and provided you with the necessary momentum to move forward. I want to say personally that making this transition has dramatically improved my outlook on my professional career. By doing so, it has created a pathway that allows me to utilize my pharmacy identity while ultimately advancing patient care. Thanks for watching today and I look forward to seeing you on our next video.